You might not think that a few simple words can make you crave McDonald's breakfast sandwiches. But if you listen closely to the sound of me saying McGriddles, McMuffin, you might be wrong. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Christopher Media, the Weedsman Podcast. Here's rickets, polio, conjunctivitis, AIDS. AIDS. Let's just, let's just go hog wild. Begin the car accident, you just <laughs> use a little bit, and you'll be fine. Yeah, rub it on your car and yourself. <laughs> It'll fix your car and your bones. <laughs> Try this special trick to get out of traffic tickets with Rick Simpson oil. Rub it on the cop. <laughs> He'll just go away. <laughs> <laughs> the Weedsman Podcast Every Friday on iTunes and ChristopherMedia.net Christopher Media, let's make some noise Christopher Media, let's make some noise From Asthma Core Studios near Detroit, Michigan It's Unregimented Gangsters, what's up guys? Hey, it is another episode of Unregimented I am Chris I'm Jay. I'm Aaron. Thank you for listening, liking, and sharing Unregimented on Facebook, following us on Twitter at Unregimented Pod. Thanks for all of the new followers on Twitter, Unregimented. Appreciate it. You can subscribe to Unregimented on iTunes for free by clicking through the iTunes banner on ChristopherMedia.net. Android users, you can find the show on Stitcher Radio. If you like what we do and you would like to show your support for us, you can donate to Christopher Media by using the PayPal button on ChristopherMedia.net. Please click through the Amazon banner and bookmark the page. It won't cost you anything extra, and when you buy something, it will help to show your support for Christopher Media. Every Monday through Friday, you can check out a new episode of our Christopher Media show. Monday and Thursday, you get Unregimented. Tuesdays, you're going to get the Weisman Podcast Nugget, which is the precursor for the big show on Fridays. Wednesdays, you have the Projection Booth. Check those guys out, projection-booth.com. A lot of buzz starting to circle those guys. Check them out. Even uh, we were interviewing a podcaster from Canada a few weeks back, and he shouted them out. So they got reach. People like them. Check them out every Wednesday, Projection Booth. ChristopherMedia.net. If you're looking to launch your own website, please click through the HostGator banner at ChristopherMedia.net. That's who we use to host all of the Christopher Media shows, and when you sign up for HostGator by clicking through our link, you're helping to support ChristopherMedia.net. DraftKings.com, daily fantasy sports leagues, no season-long commitments. You can enter free or paid contests and win your share of over $200 million in prizes. Football's done, but we got basketball. There's even fantasy MMA now. Still curious on how that works. And baseball season coming up. I know about a month here, baseball drafts are going to be starting, but if it's sports, they got it on DraftKings.com. There's there's fantasy something. When you click through the DraftKings banner at ChristopherMedia.net, you will get a free first-time deposit bonus when you sign up for Draft kings.com you know what not dirty money is the, the vote did you know not what pass. fucking dirty money is is driver fucking responsibility oh, yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> i got you fired on that <laughs> no because i we we have a mutual friend that you know mm-hmm. i'll say it's scott he yeah. got uh he got pulled over last night i saw that oh, man. <laughs> yeah all right no, no no he actually had a good experience with law yep. enforcement um mm-hmm. the cop pulled him over it's not the law enforcement and, that i have bad no. experiences with most it's, it's police the system in general it's policing that's the problem yeah, law yeah, enforcement's yeah. okay but and i'm using some paraphrasing scott there by the way yeah. but anyways um yeah he got pulled over expired tag expired plate right and the cop said <laughs> what are you doing and uh-huh. scott was like just told him the story. You just like, hey, listen, you know, this is why, blah, 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 blah. Why is your wife's license suspended? Well, I got too many parking tickets when I was a drinker and blah, 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 blah. I'm just trying to make things, blah, blah, blah. The cops fucking drove them home. Wow. Said, next time we pull you over, you better be working on this. Yeah. So that's working on it. Like, not, yeah. That's... Yeah. Like, you know, we see you every day. Right. Like, they see him every fucking day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've run his tabs more than once, I'm sure. And we're like, okay, tonight we're kind of bored. And let's yeah. see what's going on with this guy. Why are we seeing every night at three o'clock in the morning? Man, right. Rich is going to be pissed when he hears that, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> good experience with the cops. Well, I, I have well, good I, well no. With the Rich cops, got right? to drive home. It, yeah. They didn't. St. Clair Shores didn't arrest him. He got to drive home. I had one cop well, let me then, drive home. How is that, that a bad experience then? You fucking got to go home. Yeah. You know, you got to fucking go home. Well, the cops didn't put you in a fucking. They could have arrested him. And, and you know. most people can't separate the two things. Like, and I'm not trying to talk negatively about Rich. I don't know what his what his view on this in general is, but I I'm saying like. A lot of people, if they hate the system, they're going to hate every cop that works for it. Right. I don't automatically hate the person. Just like mm-hmm. I might, you know, it's a disagree. Dude doing a job. I might disagree with Walmart's policies, but there has don't been you there's been dare tell me you shot there. There's been two times where I've not forced, right. but like you know, uh, we got to go to Walmart. You know, they 
I know they have the thing that I want, or I'm out in BFE, and it's like the only place that's open. So I go there. I don't go there and give everybody that works there no. shit. Well, no, because they're always, just there working. They're just people. Working. Yeah. Try, they're on their fucking welfare right. money, so I mean, <laughs> fuck, why would you give them a hard time? Yeah. At least they're working. I'm going to see how my tax money is being spent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> got a secret shopping welfare so, system. Is that a new shirt? <laughs> yeah. Maybe you should get one. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that, it, you know, it, no, exactly. And, you know, like Scott said, he's like, he was honest with the cops. He was honest. He's like, yeah. I was just honest with him. I just told well, him. You're like, not, yeah, you're never going to get anywhere if you're not. Right. No, it, attitude is, is 100% of your experience. Any instance I've had with a cop where I've had an attitude has not ended well. No. In every instance I've had no. with a cop where I've been polite, yes, sir, no, sir. It's, all right, have a nice day. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it, it's, I think it's with cops. I think we're, we're, to or it's just it's got to be on a case by case basis. Well, yeah, because what I was going to say is I was pulled over in Sinclair Shores by a cop who he was like, "Look, you got to take care of your shit." You know, basically he gave the same same kind of cop that uh, that hit Scott. You know, I want to see that you're working on this. You know, no. next time. And but then about two weeks later, I get pulled over by a completely different cop, and he like. I was just as polite and everything, but he threw everything he could at me. But you, and, and you were already on the list, though. You're on the list. You got a warning. Right, and yeah. you're on the warning list. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm in between those two weeks, I was trying to take care yeah, of it, but, yeah. you know, needed more time. But, uh, yeah. And when I ended up going to court over it, too, they were astounded. Like, Wait, you're telling me that that officer pulled you over for a suspended license and just let you go? That's not how we do things. <laughs> it's like, yeah. you had... A cop that was making a logical decision. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm white, motherfucker. Of course you let me go. <laughs> I'm here. I'm going to pay the fucking fine. Just give me a month. <laughs> which, while, while we're talking about cops, did you guys see this story uh, out of St. Louis? Oh, which... God, yeah, where they shut the fucking body cam off. Yeah, well. Yeah, I didn't see the whole thing. Already? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, there you go. Everybody <laughs> thought dash cams and body cams were going to be the answer. You can't force ethics on unethical people. Yeah, but the the fact that once you have that in place, when that shit gets shut off, then that's pointing towards something. So, well, you know I what? Say it still still works. But it's not having the you know, how, plan. But how do you weed out the bad apples? Well, the motherfucker that shuts his body cam off, gone, suspended yeah. yes. without pay. You're out, yes. motherfucker. But right. haven't the last six months shown us they're going to take care of these, of their own anyway? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, they're going to, man. I, I mean, that job that uh, job requires them. As to. long as as long as the population's not paying attention, yes. Yeah, but they're going to. I mean, it's uh, just the nature of the population job, is man. paying attention in Ferguson. Yeah, well, yeah, they were paying attention in Staten Island. And shit, that Eric Garner was on video, and they still took care of each other. I know, it's funny, too, seeing the cop cars around here, they have courtesy, professionalism, and respect written on them. Yeah. Now and right, you know, unless you're yeah, black. Well, you you know? Well, <laughs> no, I, you're right. I think you're right. I mean, I really, mm-hmm. well, I don't, all right. I think you're right on many aspects, but I also, I, I, what I want to say is I think it has to do with, coming back to it, attitude. Yeah. We were, we were fucking trained to respect, I won't say authority, but respect, like, the motherfucker that's, you know, got to, He's working, you know, right. like I have a working man's respect for a police officer. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and that's how yeah, I yeah. look at it. You know, it's like, it, it's, but, but like but black you're... people, I mean, I'm all right, all right, all right. I'm right, I'm going to get racist here. Sorry. Right. But a lot of black people that you see on these videos and things of that nature, the, the fucking attitude that they're displaying is aggressive and like, okay. what the fuck are you doing? Like, what the fuck well, is your problem? But a lot of that's cultural. I'm, I'm not done yet. Hold on. All hold right. on. Okay, okay. Hold on one second. Now, do I think that that justifies the actions of those police officers? No, no fucking way. Right. Yeah, I understand mm-hmm. that. But so, but just to try and understand the other side of that, I agree with you. I was brought up to respect, you know, law officers, firemen, yeah, right. any kind of public service, the garbage right. men. Yeah, right. You know, they're doing a noble job. They're all doing something that, that most of us would not choose to do. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you, you run up enough against enough asshole cops. Right. No, I get it. And that wears off. <laughs> I get right? it. Even as a white person, it wears off. Um, now, think about the person in the situation that was raised the exact opposite. To right. not respect these people, to believe that these people are out to get you, 
right. the police officers I, specifically. I, I, I get it. And then compound that with your actual interactions with them where they are dicks to you. Not saying that they well, all well, are, right. but... Well, yeah, I mean, it's... it's basically, Everybody runs it's, up an, against an asshole cop oh, yeah, at least a couple it, times it, in their lives. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can, I can vouch for but, that, actually. I, and, and look at it, too. If you're a, a black man in this country... What have you seen in the last 20 years? Rodney King, Malice Green, Mohammed, what was his name, Diallo, guy who got shot 41 times, yeah. Eric Garner, uh, Michael Brown. I mean, just, uh, you know, just, just put yourself in place if you're a black man in this country. And this is, this is what you're seeing on the news. You know, it's, and then p- compound it with the whole cultural thing that they're brought up, you know, or, 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 well, I'm using they, but a lot of, a lot of uh, black men are brought up. To believe, or for black people, that you know the cops are against them. Yeah, I just, dude, I'm just shrouded with my white privilege. I mean, that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick and smart ass, but like, really, I'm I'm naive to that because, and I try to put myself in their shoes. And it's like, well, dude, if you wouldn't have been a fucking dick to the cop, or you wouldn't have fucking pulled a gun on the cop, or actually get a gun on the cop, or fucking punch the cop, or whatever, because I've seen plenty of those videos too that don't make the fucking national news, you know, mm-hmm. and plenty of them. That I follow police stuff on Facebook. And I mean, and you hear some of the stories. Like, dude, a cop just, like, dude gets out of his car because a cop pulls him over. Just fucking gets out of his car and yeah, lays the cop the fuck out. Yeah. Not even mm-hmm. not even has a gun. Just lays him out and gets back in his car and drives away. Well, uh, okay. Yeah, the racism plays there. But, I mean, the dude, the cop was making a legitimate stop. You're fucking yeah. doing something illegal. And, okay, you're black. Yes, I understand. And, the like you're raised to believe that police officers fucking hate you. But if you really want to change that view, mm-hmm. I know respectable black men get the same fucking problems. But if more and more and more and more and more started being respectful of the police and reporting this shit on their own and showing the shit mm-hmm. in court, like, hey, I was respectful. I wasn't I wasn't fighting. I wasn't blah, blah, blah. And this shit well, happened. It's not even know? like recording it and being like, you're being recorded right now. You better watch. Like, just- change the fucking norm. Change right. the, the just, thought. Just take the your Gandhi phone to record and set it on the seat next to you. Even yeah. if you don't get video, you'll get audio of what happened. That's something. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, you know, hey man, I, I, I like again, I'm, I'm gonna come back on this and say, you know, I know I'm being racist, and I know I'm, I'm shrouded by my, my whiteness. You know, like I don't have to deal with the fucking same aggravations that black people do when I get pulled over by the police because there's, mm-hmm. I've, I've been harassed by a cop. Once in my life, when I was a kid, and I was, I wasn't honestly doing shit. The other times that I've been given, well, there's one other time I was given a hard time by a cop, and that was because it was New Year's, New Year's Eve, the night of New Year's Eve, pre New Year's, whatever you want. Yeah, New, the night before New Year's Eve, and I was coming home at like two thirty in the morning. When everybody's out fucking drunk, and I was not drinking at all. And I have a concealed pistol license, and I showed it to the cop, and the cop fucking put me on the ground, and where the fuck's your gun at? Blah blah blah. blah. I was treated like a, I was treated like a criminal, but you know what? You didn't even show him the weapon. You showed him. I had no weapon on me. I had no fucking weapon on me. When I get pulled over, on top is my CPL, on bottom is my fucking driver's license, right. and I, you know, if they ask where the gun is, I tell them. Yeah. You know, I do not have it on my person, or it is blah, blah, blah. It's on my hip. It's on my da-da-da. It's right. wherever it is. It, I told him it's at home in the safe with the with the trigger lock on. <laughs> you know, I went out tonight. I thought I might have a beer. Oh, so you're telling me you're fucking drinking? I'm like, no, I wasn't drinking. I'm just telling you that I went out tonight. I thought if I had a beer or two, I right. didn't want to be, you know, I'm being responsible. And, yeah, but you know what? What I did the next fucking day was I called the police department. And when I didn't get shit response out of the police department, guess what else I did? Guess who the police officer's fucking bosses are? Even the chief of police has a boss. Yeah. Yeah. You go to city fucking hall. All right. Yeah. And you make a complaint. And I'll tell you what, that does wonders. It does a lot more wonders than fuck you, you fucking pig, blah, 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 go fuck yourself and eat shit. And, you know, that does way more, dude. There's a process that you got to use regardless of what color you are. It doesn't right. matter. If you fucking go be the squeaky wheel in City Hall about this fucking asshole cop, guess what? There ain't no sticking together. Right. There's no going head-to-head against the cop. You're going to lose every oh, time. every time. Every fucking time. You got to yeah. be strategic. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there, there was a story in Mount Clemens about 15 years ago. A uh, kid got pulled over. A guy I went to elementary school with got pulled over on a traffic stop. Cops beat the 
fuck out of him. It was on video. That guy's not working right now. <laughs> he, he doesn't have to work if right. he doesn't want to. But see, I don't care about the lawsuit. You know, like, yeah, if you beat my ass, I'm suing the fuck out of you, of course. But the problem is, is you're suing yourself, basically. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, some shit's going down over there. The cops heard that we were talking about and they're yeah, coming, for coming for you. Coming for you, I'm I'm in downtown Brooklyn. You got so. swatted, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Again, I, I'm the, you know going back to the defense that I don't see it, therefore I don't I don't experience it, so therefore I can't understand it. And I'm sure, yes, you know, from what I hear, what's being told to me, there's a lot of racism in the police department. So, but Jay, there is. There, there, there is credence to your argument too. You know, like uh, Aaron and I have a well, have a mutual friend got busted for drunk driving and intent to distribute a couple years ago, and he was just bitching about the police. And I'd always bring up the point, dude. You're sitting here in your basement bitching to me about this. You didn't get you, you didn't get uh you run through the up. ringer that bad. Yeah, you fucked up and you're sitting in your base. Yeah, you fucked mm-hmm. up. Yeah. You fucked up. You can't you have didn't, you didn't break the law. You broke the fucking law, you got There's caught. Laws, but you broke yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Right. You got caught. Mm-hmm. You know, intend to distribute what do you have like fucking few grams on them split up between a couple baggies because you went to He had a scale and a big bag of weed on him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, so I'm mostly ta-da, ta-da, <laughs> around card charts you know, like higher, yeah. higher. Yeah. <laughs> if you got a big bank roll and a bag of weed and a scale, you're fucked. Like I'm sorry, like that that's the fucking cops doing his fucking job. You know, mm-hmm. as much as it's stupid, yeah, as yeah. much as it's a stupid law that we believe that it's stupid and like it's I mean, a for waste what it's of worth, too, time. this guy is black. They didn't beat the fuck out of him. Right. And like I said, he said, I kept making a point to him, dude, you're bitching about this to me in your house. Yeah. Right. You're, right. It, you're right. sitting at home. I'm not sitting. Like, there's no glass between oh. us right now. Yeah. Some of the best. He was story. probably smoking weed with you, too. <laughs> this, this has certainly been a topic that's been all over the place lately, but. Some of the best stories that I've heard about this have been the two-part series on This American Life the last two weeks. They did a, a whole series on cops. And oh, I missed was, the second part of it. It was yeah. pretty phenomenal. The second part they actually tackle because they're like, okay, where is it? where has policing actually started to turn around and, and work for the community? And it was, um, it was Las Vegas, actually. Yeah. Ha! They, uh, they talked a lot yeah. about the Las Vegas Police Department and the changes that they've made. That's some hard work of motherfuckers in that city. But yeah, I would definitely recommend listening to both parts. Yeah, I, I need to I need to catch both parts because I caught part of the first part and I was like, oh, this fucking this that was a good it was a good yeah, yeah it was really good. Yeah, and you get them online, you, uh, you download the podcast, they're uncensored. You get all the f bombs in them too. Yeah, nice. Public radio is changing. Isn't that your grandma's yeah. public radio anymore? I have to. Though. I need to start getting into this American life. Yeah, I keep hearing you guys reference it, and it sounds like. Like shit, I would actually it's listen to it's, it's and gone, enjoy. It's gone so much further than what it used to be, too. I've always been a big fan of just hearing good stories, and they've mm. always had good stories on there, and some of them by a lot of really great authors as well. Um, but I guess my whole problem they, with NPR has always been their political agenda. I mean, uh, a lot of times it's, it's fairly not, obvious. It's not so biased anymore. I don't. I don't catch the well, like. I know it's still got liberal undertone. Like it's still a little liberal, but I mean, it, yeah. it, I, I've heard them like. I've heard it where they just kind of like let somebody's point be said. What's well, the thing? That doesn't necessarily match NPR's voice, right. and they don't like. Oh no, but you're fucking wrong because you're a conservative. It's not like that. Well, when you get a lot of when you get more of the story stuff or the the short stories written by authors, I mean, these are. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of opinion in that, and because these are artists, and they're going to be, they tend to be more liberal. But it's what they they've progressed to more actual reporting and that's where they're they're even out to it started back with uh, the whole banking crisis and they did a whole hour-long show breaking down so that people could understand in english what the fuck was really going on yeah. mm-hmm. and i think they got such a humongous response from that they started doing more like current issues and doing some actual investigative reporting on these things i, I have one thing to say about npr though I yeah. really wish they wouldn't have named it the fucking takeaway. I cannot stand that fucking name, dude. I can't the what? The, the takeaway. takeaway. God, I hate Because what did they replace? That was something else that replaced it. I did. It was when Carl Castle was. It was pre-Carl. Carl Castle was on, and then the takeaway came on. And yeah. I, I was like, I can't even do this anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, we are confusing. I mean, there's a, it's yeah. not all NPR. I, I know, like, I know. <laughs> 
I know what you're saying. Jay, you forwarded a story to us the other day talking about illegal immigrants might be able to get a tax refund. Yeah. How the fuck does that work? How that works? How does that work? Well, if you're here on a, 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 you know what, I should read it again because but what I understand, if you're here on like a, what is it? It's a work it's, visa? No, it's not a work visa because no, that wouldn't be an illegal single, immigrant. Yeah. It's something like a work like a work, like a working. I have to read it again, man. I forgot. It, it's it's fucked. It's so fucked. But <laughs> basically, well, I, what it boils down to isn't it? People who are not paying taxes may be able to get a tax refund. Well, well that's not one hundred percent true. No, yeah, you have to actually pay taxes, and, and there are a lot of immigrants that are paying taxes. But because this this has been in, all, in the news a lot too, because uh, they're trying to overturn uh, Obama's amnesty plan. No, it is no illegal immigrants who didn't pay taxes could get refunds. Now well, I didn't, yeah didn't I, now, now I will I <laughs> will give mean? you the disclaimer. Yeah. And take it for what you will. This is off of the Fox I News. Yeah. I, I just have to give the disclaimer, okay? <laughs> yeah. Illegal immigrants who never have never paid taxes can now claim tax refunds due to President Barack Obama's executive action. Yeah, of course. The IRS and commissioner admitted. Uh, yeah, I read it all. Commissioner John Cruxton said that no one bothered to ask what the tax implications of Obama's sweeping action of illegal immigration could be. About 7,000 undocumented workers pay taxes using a current taxpayer ID. Now, 7 million illegal immigrants can apply for work permits and Social Security numbers, making them automatically eligible for earned income tax credit. Meaning, yeah, they they can show that they've earned X amount of dollars last year as long as uh, they're up. See, that's the thing is what we don't but, see is that they're applying for work permits and Social Security. And after they do that, which makes them a documented immigrant. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Not legal, but a documented immigrant, and that they're going to be paying taxes next year. That they can, they can claim, they can, you know. Uh, uh, additionally, illegal immigrants using phony taxpayer IDs can now use new Social Security cards to get refunds for those years. Uh, okay, so Ill- there's some illegal immigrants out there gaming this system, yeah, okay. cheating on their taxes. Well, okay, well, just like millions yeah. of red-blooded Americans do every year. Right. So let me, uh, and that's the thing. They're more like, American I, than you think. I, I, they I, probably figured out how to cheat on their taxes yeah, before they even pay them. It's I, brilliant. I have another story actually to follow this one up that that kind of yeah you know, that, that goes with legal immigrants doing the same thing. Uh-huh. But anyways, um, fuck, what was my point? You know, that's basically you know conservative news attacking liberalism, and you know I don't necessarily right, agree in the case of. Not, I don't necessarily agree with the president's action on this, but on the other hand, those illegal, illegal immigrants could already be doing that with illegal social security numbers anyways, right. which segues me into the next conversation of TurboTax is now no longer allowing state refunds because of the fraudulent claims that have been made. Really? Last year, there were 30% higher fraudulent claims through TurboTax than there, there were in 2013. Now, 2015, already there's 15% more fraudulent claims than last year, equaling out to five point some odd, $5.9 billion of fraudulent taxes. So what's happening is people are getting Social Security numbers yeah. and filing for those tax returns, getting those tax returns, and then the people who own the Social Security number go to file their taxes and find out, no, you don't get your taxes back because you've already been paid. And then we spend more tax money auditing those people who... Yeah, ex- ex- exactly. The, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, it takes years to get your money because, right. you know, it is fraudulent. So, you know, even though that money is insured, you know, it's... <laughs> The insurance company pays the government, and then the government uses the insurance money to right. to audit the people that were honest. <laughs> you know, it, right. it goes back to like the only thing that the only people that get policed are the are people who do things the right way. <laughs> you know? Right. Whereas the solution on both sides of this to both prevent people from trying to cheat the tax code and from being so bound up in red tape that you can't even investigate all these instances of fraud is simplify the fucking tax code already. Well, well no, they're coming down to that. What happen, what's happening is the fact that uh, uh, electronic filing has become so big that there's no personal one-on-one yeah. anymore that they right. can use TurboTax. And I guess like the states were just like, fuck you, we're not allowing it. Uh-huh. Like the states. Were, like, yeah, you're going to have to go to HR and our block and show them your ID and all this shit. Yeah, but I mean... That's what I did this year. shit with that too, but I mean, it's right. still more difficult because now you got to produce, you got to pay, somebody has to pay to have all those documents created which can run you know hundred dollars <laughs> or whatever you know no, i mean it's 
I just everybody needs to be chipped. <laughs> I'm joking. Chip. I'm joking. Oh, oh yeah. micro chipped. I'm there fucking you joking. <laughs> we start searching for the one. Well, then you just get RFID scanners and fucking steal people's identification mm-hmm. with an RFID scanner, which you know yeah. that's how that works. There's no unhackable way to do this. There really isn't. I mean, there's no way. I mean, how do you stop it? Audit every money. No, you accept you accept it as a dangerous society, like driving on the freeway. Exactly. You want because, freedom? Well, the, the shitty thing is, is like go, the, there's your fucking freedom. Yeah, freedom isn't free. It costs folks <laughs> it like costs, you and me. It costs when they drain your bank account after they stole your identity. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's why you need a good identity lock. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, you want you want you want free Wi-Fi everywhere you go. Well, there you go. That's yeah. what you get. Now they're stealing the shit right out when yeah. you go to Target and shop. They're yeah. stealing all the information off your phone. <laughs> yeah, that's well, you know, well, I'm about to get Target one of those ID. Uh-huh. Well, well, they were no, enough. no, yeah, they, well, that's because, it's a good point because they've been through so much because they had lax fucking security policies. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, I, they're fucking paying the price for it now. I'm working. Remember the computer I was telling you I was working on that had the nastiest virus I've ever fucking seen. Who, like Bill? A, I don't know, I don't know why I oh, wanted to name your computer. No, it's not mine. It was a <laughs> customer of mine's computer. Nastiest virus uh-huh. I've ever fucking seen, man. Like yeah. na- just fucking nasty, all the way into the bios. Like the gonorrhea. Oh, uh, it it was into the bios. It was <laughs> freaking. I thought Damn. I lost the machine. Like Damn. seriously, thought I lost it. And, Damn. Uh, yeah, it, it was like, it would not allow me to put a CD in, wouldn't allow me to freaking do a USB, wouldn't allow me to do shit. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't do shit. This is like not in my ass. Yeah. So I find out that this machine is actually, has a proxy server set up. It is uh-huh. a proxy server. Yeah. Which okay. it was not, it's, a, it's like that computer right there. Like, <laughs> do you know what a proxy server is? You know, like yeah. maybe you do, but yeah, like, yeah. yeah, okay, maybe, maybe you you know, Chris doesn't. So if your machine set up as a proxy server, basically, you know, there's a computer that connects to your computer to connect to the network, internet or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's like using your computer as a filter. Well, this is like a distribution. Network, yeah, you're though. right. Right. You're, you're like, basically they're, they're grabbing your IP address so they can hide theirs. Right. Okay. And, um, well, come to find out, this guy has a, every fucking credit card he's ever had, like ever had since his computer has been, has actually had fraudulent charges put on it. Well, guess who found out why? Me. <laughs> because all, off at the source. all their banking, everything, I mean, taxes, yeah. banking, everything yeah. is on his computer. The shit that I found on this computer, I was like, man, you, like their identity was on this machine. And it's like, okay, yeah, <laughs> like not, cool at all like if you're going to do this on a computer you really need to have a separate computer to do it on that your kids aren't fucking around on you know yeah like your phone <laughs> no. no don't do your taxes on your phone no i don't mean just taxes <laughs> i mean like you know people like yeah. they have this like the, the the put your credit card on your phone and use your phone to pay for shit oh yeah fuck that <laughs> yeah i won't do that the apple pay right. i will yeah. not fucking do fuck that fuck that google wallet no, fuck that. It was I've had ISIS, two cards hacked way. in the last year. I'm not putting it on my phone. I'm to the point where I'm going to probably get one of those identity things. Right. Just because it's a fucking pain in the ass. Yeah, it, it, it is a pain in the ass. I know, because they cleared out my bank account one time, and it was my fucking bank account because it was a debit card. Cleared that fucking thing out, and it was mm-hmm. like right before Christmas. And it was like I was going shopping for Christmas that weekend, and I got it got caught on Friday. So I had no money. Over the weekend. <laughs> well, I there is a belief that like uh, Apple Pay and all those services, they have a, a system that seems to be foolproof. They generate unique numbers for their transactions and all that shit. But, but all that means is nobody's figured it out yet. It's, it's well, just too new. Wait, but somebody, somebody has because they somebody fucking programmed it. it. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I that mean, it hasn't sold out yet, <laughs> right? Oh, it's just, you know, it's, it's like, you know, the hacked, like, go back to the hacked celebrity accounts, you mm-hmm. know, like for iTunes or whatever, you know, like, yeah. uh, hello, I don't want my credit card on that fucking phone if, like, you can get my nudie pictures. Right. Well, that, that yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's based different. on it's password different. hacks. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, it's like one, two, three, password <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I know. I know it's based on password, password hacks, but, all right, put that in perspective here. If they're hacking phones for mm-hmm. pictures with password hacks, you have your, you have your credit card on that phone. 
Now they not only get your fucking picture, they get your credit card. You know, it's no, not until encryption is. It needs to be quantum encryption before I fucking put my credit card on there. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I want a unique generated fucking credit card number every time right. I make a transaction. And until they can do that, no, no. Damn. They got those. Stu- Intel's got all these dumb commercials with the guy from Big Bang Theory. Yeah, can't stand it. And uh, one of the latest one is because he, he's always showing this new technology that Intel's working on, and he's like, "You can use your face as your password." And like, what prevents somebody from just having a picture of so, you? So, so Edward and holding it yeah, up to the camera, right? So Edward Norton can use my fucking phone. <laughs> you know, because we have similar facial you know, features. So come on. <laughs> What if I shave my fucking beard? What if I have a beard? What if I have a mustache? What if I have, like, what if my fucking eyebrows get blown off or something or I shave my head? Like, what do you, how does it, how does it, what? Even even in the last 30 years, nobody, in in fiction, nobody's considered that facial recognition would be a secure way. No. You've been doing retinal scans since James Bond was fucking Sean Connery. All right. I'm actually a professional in that, in that industry as far as retinal scans and and biometrics, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, you can fool a retinal scan with a laser etched copy of an eye of that retinal retinal um, with play doh. Yeah, you you can. Or you can just pluck the eye out. That's what I saw well, in the movies. Right, I mean, that's what you see in the movies. Yeah, but I mean, this is even more common because you got three D fucking right. printers that are like, oh yeah, you know, what six hundred bucks. Yeah. So somebody fucking happens to have like their iPhone with like or something and takes a picture of you while you don't even know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like if you. Let's say it all goes down to retinal. Well, it's not secure enough, you know, and that's crazy to think it's not secure enough to have retinal scans be fucked here enough, but it can be fooled by Play-Doh. Same thing with fingerprints. Yeah. The thing, the problem with fingerprints is they're very difficult to get to work on a contest, con- uh, continual basis because of the oils in your fingers. Uh, Asi- Asian people have a really hard time with biometrics. Really? Yeah, because they don't have as much oil in their skin as, you know... It's somebody with dry skin, it, it's it's very difficult. Asians are not as oily as other races. They yeah, learned right. Something today. Right. Well, that's one of the problems with biometrics. I mean, they uh-huh. they've come past that now. I mean, that was a problem like five six years ago. And but they eat so much fish. I, I know that's what doesn't <laughs> fucking. Say. It's, well, I think it's it's not necessarily less oil. It's a different right. You know, but but oils in your fingers can actually like you know change your features of your of your fingerprints. I know they call us PC American. Yeah, well, it's because all the fast food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Because Big Macs are two for five bucks right now. And pizzas are five dollars. That's... that's oh. <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get me on that right now. Okay, so you can get a thousand calories for five dollars, yeah. right? Uh-huh. If you want to get... Yeah, but only like 200 of them are good. <laughs> but they taste so wonderful. <laughs> but to get to get something healthy at McDonald's, like the, the thing I always order all the time is I try to get, because I spend most of my job on my ass, mm-hmm. I try to get, I order the bacon ranch salad, I get it with the grilled chicken breast, I tell them no shredded cheese, no bacon bits, and the balsamic vinaigrette dressing. A whole 235 calories. Right. Fucking $7. Right. Yeah. But you can get... Two fucking Big Macs for five dollars. Right. Well, that that goes further than just fast food. You go to the grocery store, and, and well, the healthier you get, the more yeah. expensive it's going to get. The thing with that, though, Chris, is like, okay, and the reason why that costs more is because they got to keep that head of lettuce, which takes up more room in a cooler. You know, they got to transport that shit. It's got to stay fresher. It's got to stay fresh, or else if it's brown, nobody's going to buy that shit. You know, I mean, you know, right. I'm sure I don't yeah, need to go into I, all the logic. Yeah, but I work in the restaurant but industry. I understand. I know. Produce is far. Cheaper cheaper right now than meat it's far cheaper it's it's far cheaper right now than wheat yeah and also where the government subsidizes the fuck out of corn why can't the government instead of subsidizing corn growing corn why don't they subsidize healthy food options because it's because it doesn't produce fuel yeah that's one of the things we're facing in my industry right now is the rising cost of wheat because okay. farmers there's no money in it for farmers yeah. to grow wheat right. anymore the government's cutting them big fat checks to grow corn for ethanol Yep. So there's less wheat being produced. So now the cost of flour is fucking skyrocketing. Cost of corn skyrocketing. Yeah, it's everything fucking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, what's in a Big Mac? Meat and bread. The price of meat the last two years has been fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Well, there's some meat in a Big Mac. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hundred <laughs> percent beef. About three percent of the patties. Or it should say hundred percent beef in, in in small little parentheses. Now, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. 
I can't believe that I used to put away double quarter pounders. I, oh, I can't do it anymore. Me neither. Dude, Rob St. Mary always tells me the grossest thing he ever saw was me put down two double quarter pounders. Damn. Yeah, two bro. Of them. But I was like 16. Yeah. You're an eating machine oh, when you're well, fucking. I can still I do that. I was a beef eating machine. Well, I can <laughs> still do that. I don't do it anymore, but yeah. I used to get two double quarter pounders and fucking tear them apart and put them together. Well, and have yeah. one get this extra bread out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't need that carbohydrate. <laughs> and it doesn't seem that uh, that putting the calorie count on the menu has curbed anyone's behavior. I know, Chris, that you use this information to your benefit. You, mm-hmm. You've you learned how to, you know, find out what kind of calories you're intaking and how to regulate it. Mm-hmm. You start at the source if you want to solve a problem. But I don't. it doesn't seem to, as a nation, curb anyone's behavior. <sighs> but no, but laws will. If we make Coca-Cola illegal or whatever, you know, Know, or make it you can't have a over a fucking sixteen right, ounce like they cup. In New York for a little while, right? Like you can only <laughs> you, like you can like, only buy. Give me two. Yeah, you can buy one yeah. serving. Give me two fries, five cokes, and uh, two double cheeseburgers. Yeah, and then who makes the money off of that? And then there's the tax on top of that too. But, but okay, out here though, calorie counts are required at, at fucking everything. Yeah, which it's it's like it's, you even go to a sit down. Restaurant, they got that shit on the menu. Yep. Yeah. Yep. If it's if it's on a menu, no matter what kind of restaurant it is, it has to have the calorie count. And I can tell you that steered me away from a lot of places I used to go. Right. KFC. <laughs> hey, nice knowing you. Yeah, I won't eat at KFC. Uh uh-uh. uh No fucking way. You know, but I mean, too, but it's also alerted me to it is possible to eat somewhat healthy at fast food restaurants. They just fucking hide that shit because yeah. they want you to buy their money makers. Yeah, they want you to buy the high profit items. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like the apples that they give the kids are supposed to be healthy, but them motherfuckers last forever. They don't brown, man. Like, come on. Like, how much lemon juice do you got in there to make that shit not brown? Uh, that ain't lemon yeah, juice. I, had, I left an apple out for a while. I set it on my nightstand and forgot about it and then threw it away, like, two weeks later. And it was, like, perfect all the way around except for the top had just, like, sunken in about a half an That's inch. because it was a little you, yeah, you didn't buy organic because it's got <laughs> wax coating on it. Right. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah? I do I, not. I don't like organic shit. I buy the bananas. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like 10 though, cents it, more it, around. Here, here comes the one upper story. Go for it. What? I had a, uh, every morning at, when I'm at the office, they put out fresh fruit, which is cool. Keeps me out of the vending machines. Keeps oh, a lot yeah. of people out of the vending machines. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I grabbed an apple and I didn't eat it and I put it in my desk. I come back a week later, open my desk. Oh, hey, look, there's that apple I put in there. Fucking still perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's because it's got the wax coating on it. That and it was, I'm sitting there and I, I ate it and it tasted fine and it was good. But I'm sitting there thinking like, what the fuck's in this apple? <laughs> it's in my desk for a week, but and nothing GMOs happened. And wax, baby. Speaking of uh, food at work, my supervisor comes in on uh, yesterday, which was uh, as of recording this Fat Tuesday, right? And he brings in some punch keys. Oh yeah. A box. Uh, there's four people that work there, including the boss. And he brings in a box of six of them. Sets it down on the on the table in the dining area. Opens it up, eats one. Says nothing to anybody else. Closes the box and goes about his day. Is he a sociopath? Wait, yeah. say that again? He, he brings in food. This is one example of him. He brings in food once in a blue moon, but he won't say shit to him. You know, if I'm going to bring in food, hey, I brought some donuts. I'm not bragging, but you just... I go just, eat that shit. You just, I go eat it. You don't what? fucking put your claim on that shit. I'm eating that shit. I'm sure that, <laughs> I'm sure that was his intention. Yeah. But you're really going to make somebody no. go through that? Like, can I no. can I have one of those those donuts, the uh, half dozen that you brought in for yourself? Apparently, right. Well, no, that well, that, yeah, because that plays against people, like you know, honest people's right. Like, you're not going to go open that box I up wait. because I wait, you know, I wait until they left mine. and then I scarfed one down. Exactly. Yeah, and you <laughs> ate it as fast as you fucking could, so he didn't get caught. Right. Exactly. Right. You like felt like you're a criminal. A, right. Exactly. Because it's like, oh my god, is he looking? Is he looking? Oh, he, oh he's gone for an hour. I'm going to chow this bitch down. One. Didn't even get to enjoy it. You just shoved the pooch in your face just for a spite. <laughs> he also took a ten dollars tip from a customer today and <laughs> didn't split it. He did not. She specifically like gave him a five and five ones. I was like, "This is for you guys, you guys." And personally, guys. I've like I had that uh, happen. Ten dollar tip. <laughs> 
you keep it, you obviously fucking need it more than I do in your 9,000 square foot fucking house. Right. <laughs> Why don't you buy a light bulb? I had it happen to me one time. I was out on a job on my own. This guy was like trying to give me 10 bucks, and I actually helped shovel his car out of the snow. That's part of why he was giving it to me. But unless I'm like in a job where I'm expected to get tipped, it's yeah. not even a question. Oh. I turn it down. It's just not proper. If it gets back to your boss and he thinks it's weird, you know, there's some imp- there's a, there's impropriety that is implied with the taking that money, even though it's just a couple bucks. Oh, for sure. And, but you you also do the polite thing, you know. I turned it down twice, and then the guy put it in my pocket. I right, didn't throw right. it back at him. I was like, thank you. Yeah. And then he beat yeah. his ass for touching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're in my personal space. Get the fuck out. You're not my mom. You're not my dad. You're not my mom. <laughs> Stop touching my cock. <laughs> So, um, you should have sued him for assault. So yeah, I mean, she <laughs> she handed them the money with the payment for the the services that we were doing. You know, here's a check for your boss, and here's ten bucks for you guys for your trouble. Didn't say anything. Didn't refuse it. It's just like right. okay, uh, yeah. put it on the clipboard with the with the check. Made no mention of it. Well, gone. How do, you, how do you think you paid like, for the punchki you <laughs> stole from him, dude? <laughs> you stole a fucking punchki from you. You getting a tip? <laughs> you had you on camera. There you go. <laughs> He's got Privilege fucking GPS, the- <laughs> GPS chips in the punchki. He just ate that shit. <laughs> hey, that Privilege of being the business owner. Donuts. Yeah. No, I'm not shy about that shit, though. I'll go with yeah. that donut. But I'll do it when the fuckers stay on there. <laughs> like, hey, that's a good goddamn donut you just gave me there. I just, <laughs> I just don't want to be on the radar for anything, too, because I constantly feel like him and the boss are just hating on me anyway oh, all oh. the time. Yeah, that's why they, they give me a they piss, they piss me off. Bring the boss is He's giving the itinerary to the supervisor of all the places that we have to go today, of which they keep me in the complete dark about yeah. constantly, and then says... Well, you gotta call this person before we go. I'm like, okay. And he's like, have him do it. He can work a phone pointing at me. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I just wanna, I just seriously just wanna scream. I can do a lot more than work a fucking phone if you give me a fucking chance. But I'm like kept in the dark constantly. Well, and you go throw- pick this up, yeah. put it over there. What do I do next? Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. Well, that's how you start treating them. Yeah. That's how you start, because you're not being subordinate. Right. And you don't do it with sarcasm. You right. Just, what do you want me to do next? What do you want me to do next? Yeah. Do oh, next? that's what I do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And eventually they'll get to a point where like, well, here, like, they'll, they'll let me in on it. And then basically, are, this are is what we sure? th- they'll show me what the this is what we have to accomplish. And I go, okay, I can get there myself. Thank you. See, when I get put in those positions, I just speak my mind. I need another cigarette. <laughs> I just speak my mind, man. I found that that comes like they're not going to fire you. They can't fire you for that. They can look down upon you. Yeah, and then they I can just, find reasons. I to keep get my mouth here. shut no matter oh, what. I'm just, I'm just uh, Jay, though, place we're not will your stay. Shut, your head down and do your job. No, right. pacifism doesn't get you anywhere. Let's say Jay were an at will state though. You they, you could be fired because they don't like how you combed your hair in the morning. Yes. Dude, no, I understand it, but here's the here's the thing is like I'm a union member, they can fire me for quote unquote lack of work. Right. Like yeah. drop of a hat. Well how do I contest that? You can't. I'm a labor pool. Fuck you. You're fu- you're not fired, you're laid off. Go to the hall. Okay. You know, but no, I mean if you're gonna like, you know, I'm having an issue right now where I got I got questioned today. And I told them what the fucking problem was and what, you know, like, here's the solution. But it wasn't taken from me. He, the boss, went off to the manufacturer's representative and yeah. told them about what was going on. And the manufacturer's representative basically sent him back the exact same email that I had sent off to technical support. The technical support forwarded to the manufacturer's, <laughs> to the manufacturer's rep. He rewrote my email and sent it to my boss. And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, he, really? yeah, he calls me and he's like, oh, yeah, okay, so, you know, we got a ball. I'm like, huh. I'm like, didn't that email look a little familiar to you? <laughs> and he goes, what? I'm like, yeah, you know, minus like a couple of big words here and there or added a couple of big words here and there. Like, didn't that look pretty familiar to you? I'm like, you know, I wrote that on an iPhone. So you can kind of tell the difference between an iPhone and a computer writing. So somebody uh, just pretty much fixed my my grammatical grammar whatever grammar errors and yeah. punctuation, uh-huh. and didn't fix it very well because there was there was actually a word in there that I misspelled that I knew I misspelled it and it got sent back with the same word misspelled. Yeah. So I was like, didn't it look a little familiar to you? He goes, oh whatever, blah 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 blah, and I'm like. No, really, didn't that look familiar to you? Didn't I already say that? Like, isn't this a bit redundant? You know, like, that just wasted 45 minutes of, like, four people's time. Yeah. I'm like, that, you know, and he's like, oh, I get your point. Da-da-da-da-da. It's like, well, you know. Do you? 
Yeah, <laughs> I know. I said that's where I stop. Right? <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> that, see, that's being a dick. There's a line. Yeah. There's, that's being a smartass. Right. You know, I was being a smartass by, enough by saying, "Didn't that look a little familiar to you?" Because yeah. I use that same tone of voice, like yeah. you know. And man, re- redundant conversations. As much as I do it, if I don't catch myself doing it, I fucking hate redundant conversations. I hate it. Mm-hmm. I just said that twice. Right? <laughs> oh, you'd, you'd, you'd fucking hate my job, dude. No, no, I get, no, I, I get the same <laughs> thing, dude. It's, I think that's a job because in the way, anytime I'm stuck in that circle is I explain it differently every single time with just different words. It's the same thing with different words because I don't want to hear myself saying the same words again. Right. <laughs> It's like, okay, I'll start up here and bring it down, you know, three or four or five, oh, six times. See, I've started fighting fire with fire. I hear a lot of the same excuses and bullshit from a lot of the people I deal with out here. Yeah. So now I've taken a page out of their book. You're going to keep beating the same drum? Well, guess what? I'm going to do the same shit to you, motherfucker. Yeah. (laughs) You know, how do you like it? Only my drum makes sense. You know, I run into a lot of guys who are looking for answers and then you don't give them the answer they want. So they write you off. Well, you asked for my honest opinion. Here's what's really going down. Sorry if it's not what you wanted to hear. Your job, could you could say, what the fuck do you think I'm here for? I pretty much do in a sense. <laughs> not, I can't afford it words. like that. No, but, I know. No, but, yeah, but these guys... You say it more professional. They were not... Yes. It doesn't sound like they were looking for information either. They were looking for somebody to reinforce what they already believed. Yes. And when they didn't, when they failed to do that, then they wrote, that's not information. That's not seeking... Yeah. That's not what I want to hear. Yeah, I show up with right, the cold right. water of reality, and they don't want to hear it, you know? Yeah. And the good thing about it is my boss is behind me on everything. He's like, no, nope, yeah. you're doing what you should be. You, you're, yeah. you're doing what I put you there for. My, so. old, my old boss held a lot of trust in my opinion. This new guy is not so yeah, not so much. And it's like, you know, I get the, you know, we value you, blah, 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 blah. I get introduced as a lead or head tech all the time. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, if you're not listening to me, don't introduce me that way. Right. Like, really, I, I've said that. I don't me. need your executive producer credit. Thank yeah, you. right. I don't, exactly. You know, it's like, I have plenty of those. Thank you very much. <laughs> it, it, no, I, actions, I let my actions speak for me. Right. And if you don't fucking like it, well, if I'm wrong, I admit I'm wrong. If I'm right, oh, I'm going to hammer it home. <laughs> <laughs> I will fucking stand on that pedestal and you ain't knocking if me I'm right, home. everybody's knowing. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it, it just comes to the fact of, like, I'm not, I don't let the fear of, losing my job get in the way of my way up yeah you know you're not gonna fucking step on me right i think that's i i'm gonna be a you could step on me but i'm gonna be a fucking thumbtack in your foot you know you know i'm of the theory that a good healthy dose of paranoia keeps you on your toes and employed yeah i agree (laughs) yeah but that's that's a good point i think that's where i'm at now is not speaking up for fear of losing my job but are you there's, there's another side of it too. I mean, to a point, you are, but I mean, are you expendable? Like um, easily replaced? You know, no. I, 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 no. Every, everybody's expendable. No, I agree. I mean, everybody's I said expendable, to a point, but not but... yeah. But easily replaced, not so much. Right. Um, not say that they they won't get by without me. No, oh, right. they're fine. No, no yeah, they've been in business before right. you. They'll be exactly. in business after you. Yep. You know, that's, but I, there's also the side of me that's saying like. Well, do I want to move up? Do I want to work closer to this person who's already pissing me off on a daily basis? You know? Well, I, I think it's a lack of respect at this point. And if you're mm-hmm. not, if you're not, I wouldn't say speaking your mind per se, but like right. if you're not like asserting yourself, then that person's yeah. never going to have any respect and you're always going to be treated that way. Right, right. And then here in two, there's the other, the other part of that too is, well, the same mutual friend we were talking about earlier. Uh-huh. When he made it clear that he did not want to move up, yeah. right. he became a marked man. Right. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah, were looking yeah. for any reason to get rid of him. Well, you're just going to sit here and take up payroll and not advance. Right. It's, be- it's much better to keep your mouth shut in that instance if you yeah. don't want to move up. Because it, 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 if, yeah. if they looked at you like, well, he, he's trying and he wants to move up, he's just not accomplishing it. Well, he's worth keeping around because he right. has a good attitude or whatever. But now, yeah. Now, see, that I, I just had this instance actually come up in my job a uh-huh. couple, couple of few weeks ago where the boss pulls me in and he says, listen, you know, I really, I really want to put you in a management position. You know, and you know, but I really need you on the road. And I just flat out told him, "Listen, 
I don't have patience for people. Yeah. I have the utmost patience for a piece of equipment. I'm like, you, you can put me in that position, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm an asshole. Right. You know, I'm not saying no, but I'm telling you that I'm in a better, you, you will be better off to have me where I'm at. Right. Like, you know, just, yeah, I'm not saying right no. Right where I'm at is where I'm going to be most efficient for the company. Right. This is my job. I'm doing the job yeah. that, that, you know, this is, I know this job. You put me in management. Well, I, Hmm. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm not management material. I would just mm-hmm. say that like I'm a little more. I got a lot of attitude when it comes to like people not doing their job. Yeah, you know, like I'm not gonna fucking pussyfoot around. Uh-huh. You know, like you're a fucking professional. You should be. I shouldn't have to tell you stupid things. You right. know, <laughs> or I'll tell you a stupid thing once, twice. You're gonna get my attitude. The third time, I'm gonna tell you. Bark up a tree, you know, like get the hell out of my face. And like that's, you can't do that as a manager. And see, I at least know myself well enough to at least admit it. Now, I mean, is that me telling my manager, like, I'm not willing to move up? No. Right. It's saying, knowing your skill set. Right. Here's my strong point. Right. (laughs) I (laughs) might not be the best position to put me in over on that point, right. you know. Mm-hmm. Just, but you're not the guy going, I'm fine washing dishes no, for 10 years. No, <laughs> 20 no, years. No, <laughs> 20 no, years. no. I want to be the best at what I'm doing, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. I've I've worked my ass off to do that. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I want to be management because, you yeah. know, how usually it is is the guy that works their ass off, they get bumped into management and then, mm-hmm. you know, they're a manager and, like, that's the natural progression of things, right? Yeah. Well, I don't want to deal with people like that. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I'm very good at, like, you know, like the superficial customer relationship. And I hate to say call it superficial because, you know, I do care for my customers and I put them in high regard. Uh-huh. But it's I'm very good at being polite and professional and, you know, it, it, like, hey, I know what I'm doing. You, I've proven to you that I know what I'm doing. So, ta-da, you know, yeah. and I just let my actions speak. You can't do that in management. Right. You know, not that I'm aware of, not in any management style that I know. No, I have a significant amount of patience, I guess, but you have to, especially if you're going to manage anybody who was born in like the last 25 years. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's right. Well, you have, no, I, to, no, you have, to have an extreme amount of patience. But see, I mm. work with a group of like these guys are supposed to be professionals. Like they're supposed to be, you know, they're, yeah. they're, they're trained the same way I'm trained. You know what I mean? They do, you know. Of course, I have more training than most of them, but Mm -hmm. that doesn't make me qualified to be their boss necessarily. It's just I have a different skill set. And, you know, if if you're pulling cable and you fuck up on a cable pull that, God damn it, you've been doing this shit for 15 years and you fuck that up, I'm not going to be nice about it. You know? Right. And I just I don't have that bone in my body because it's like my I have no tolerance for that type of incompetence, you know, it's like, okay, why did you fuck this up? You know, I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, are you having a hard time at home? Blah, blah, blah. I don't fucking care about your home life. Yeah. You know, like this, you're here to do this job. You fucked up. You're a professional. You're supposed to be the same as me. <laughs> why didn't you do it right? Well, no, I used to tell people all the time, we're not here to be friends. We're here to do a job. Right. Doesn't mean I can, I'm allowed to be an asshole to you or we can respect each other. We can tolerate each other. But bottom line is we're all here to do a job. You don't want to do the job. I got stacks of applications of people that probably will. And I I think that's my other issue with being a manager is like most of the guys I work with like don't really like me too much. Yeah. You know, like and I'm fine with that. You know, it's because I I'm I'm a service technician, man. Like I'm alone I like to be alone. You well, know? getting getting too friendly with people that you have to manage can be really bad. Too. Right. Yep. yep, made that mis- that was rookie mistake yeah. when yeah. I was in management. I've, I've my been first in that situation too, where like I want my crew to love me. I figure, that oh, they'll too. be motivated. No, no. <laughs> they're motivated no. for like two weeks and then they no. just walk. Out. Oh, I right. I can't come in today. My throat's sore. No, mm-hmm. and, and I did you know learn that too. And this is one yep. of the, this is where I came to my deduction of I'm not patient with people. Yeah, was this job I'm at now? I'm at I was at, I came in as a level of being a supervisor or a foreman. This is what's called a foreman. Mm-hmm. So I come onto a job site first time I've ever been on like this large of a construction site, and boom, I'm a foreman. Like shit was handed over to me. And I, I took over for another foreman. Yeah. Well, I was like. Okay, you guys all know what you're doing. I don't need to be telling you what to do. I just need to tell you the tasks of the day, and you should be oh, able to handle yeah. it, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Can't Wrong. Do that. <laughs> Fucking, right, exactly. Rookie mistake, right? So that's what I did. You know what Go I ended up with? Three Stooges skit. Well, no. What, what I ended up with was a guy with resentment, 
a guy yeah. that had been working on that job site that I basically let him run the construction portion of it because he knew it. And I right. was just paying attention to the errors that were made by the last foreman and I was trying to fix them. Right. So now he's doing the, well, I'm doing all the work and this guy's getting paid. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it was. And um, ended up animosities happening. And mm-hmm. I had no idea these animosities were brewing behind my back. You Dude, know, that sounds it, like me in Kalamazoo. Right. And uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I got ran the fuck out of that town. Well, I didn't even know that they were ganging up well, on me. The thing is, like, see, I'm really good at politics. Yeah. I'm really fucking good at it. So the last foreman that was there and this guy that's got, these two guys got animosities for me because the foreman that was there thought that I came in and stepped on his toes, you know, and took his job over. Well, he went hunting for a two-week hunting trip, and by the time he got back, I had found all the fucked up mistakes, and I fixed the job, and I actually made it come in mm-hmm. at a much, much higher profit than what they were thinking. So, of course, nice. I looked great, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, was it installed correctly? Uh, after my inspection, it was installed well, yeah. but it wasn't. 100% because I wasn't on the guys. I was busy doing the job that I do, which is find problems. Right. You know, and it wasn't any. But anyways, end up these guys get animosity. They want to run me out of the company. They start talking shit behind my back. One yep. guy tells me this guy's talking shit about you. The other guy tells me that guy's talking shit about you. So yep. they're both talking shit about me behind my back to each other. And I just step back. And all I said to each one of them is I walked up to one and I said, why are you talking shit behind my back to Mike? Yeah. Ta-da! <laughs> Guess who won? <laughs> I did, because now those two guys are against each other. Right. <laughs> but one thing I've learned in, I don't know, I think about 20 years of working, the more people, if you have a lot of people gunning for you, you're doing your job well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's the whole goal. Like, the goal that I was told was, like, your your name has to be on it. In the it has to be on the interior of a porta potty on the job job site somewhere else. You're not doing your job right. Right, right. <laughs> you know, like you got to be part of a dick pic or you know yeah. something somebody carved into the fucking well, <laughs> porta I mean, potty. I mean, I've been into I've been into loss prevention and HR a bunch of times. Ugh. Just celebrated my yeah. 10 year anniversary. I didn't do fucking shit. It was people with an axe to grind because you're outperforming them, right. you know, and they feel slighted. It's right. like, well, sorry, I care more than you. Well, you know, yeah. like, oh, actually, I'm not. Yeah, it's like you show up and, like, you know, you're not even, you're just coming into work and giving your solid hours and doing your fucking job, and then people get pissed because they were slacking off and just basically made them look like shit. Hey guys, thanks for listening, thanks for clicking, thanks for liking, thanks for sharing, thanks for subscribing for free by clicking through the iTunes banner on ChristopherMedia.net. Thank you for telling a friend, I probably already said that, but that's how important it is because that's how podcasts work. Uh, We drop every Monday and Thursday, check out all of the other shows on ChristopherMedia.net. So stay tuned, thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time. If you enjoy this show and want more people to know about it, head on over to iTunes, leave a comment, and rate it five stars. Make sure you like and share us on Facebook, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. Just search for Christopher Media. Thank you in advance for supporting Christopher Media by clicking on the PayPal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support ChristopherMedia.net. Most importantly, we would like to take the time to extend an extra special thanks to you. Christopher Media could not exist without your support. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net, and thank you you for listening christopher media let's make some noise you might not think that a few simple words could make you crave mcdonald's breakfast sandwiches but if you listen closely to the sound of me saying mcgriddles 